just, just remember that you're standing on a planet that's evolving and revolving at 900 miles an hour. It's orbiting at 90 miles a second. So it's reckoned reckon the sun that is the source of all our power. The sun and you and me are all the stars that you can see are moving at a million miles a day. In the outer spiral arm at 40,000 miles an hour, the galaxy we call the Milky Way. Why are so many amazing people out here today in Parliament Square? Obviously we're here to stand up for science and to fight for something that we uh, believe in in that way. I'm firmly of the opinion that science is the greatest tool that humanity has ever come up with. Science has a fundamentally critical impact on your everyday life, on everybody's life. That means that science isn't just for the few held by some elites in an ivory tower out of reach. It's for everybody. But it can only be for everybody if we, as a society, value things like evidence, we value things like critical reasoning and thinking, and make them more embedded, more thoroughly in our everyday mindset. And it can only be for everybody if society at large sees science as the beneficial thing that it actually is. not just in London, but around the UK and around the world. The Cassini spacecraft has been orbiting Saturn for the last 13 years, sending back data, incredible images, and you might have seen in the news last week, discovered the signs of life, the conditions necessary for life on Saturn's moon Enceladus. That's amazing. Cassini cost about $3 billion. Sounds like a lot of money, and can you compare it to almost anything else? For example, military spending. Three billion dollars will buy you ten F-22 Raptor fighters. The US has 200 F-22 Raptors. And if we can afford to spend that much ending life, then I think we can afford to spend more looking for it elsewhere in the solar system and saving it down here on Earth. What do we want? Everything's policy! When do we want it? After peer review! We need to be on the street. That's what we're here to do today. We need to show the rest of the world that we are people. We are not experts in ivory towers. We are here. We're already taking that first step. We are on the ground. People can see us. That's step one. Step two, who are you talking to? We are actually real people. We are not in lizard suits. That is not a thing. Look around you. This is a big, wide, amazing group of people. Look how many of you there are! Woo! Think what it means to be a scientist in public and think what you can do to make sure people see us not as freaky experts with weird hair and only one skin tone, but as actual people. I just found it crazy that we have to be here at all. You know, we're in a city built by science. We're walking on roads that engineers built. This is a monument to what scientists and engineers have achieved all around us. And yet we have to stand here and justify, justify it. My work has taught me that the scientific community has a long way to go to addressing its problems of sexism and racism. And this isn't just for the sake of diversity. This is for the sake of good evidence and good research. The practice of science isn't perfect, and let's face it, we can't expect it to be. Scientists are only human, like the rest of us. But we need to impress on people that the process of getting to the truth, science, is the best one we have. The road may be rocky. Scientists will get stuff wrong sometimes. But ultimately, evidence is what makes science special.
I'm going to start with a quote, or at least a paraphrase, from one of my heroes in science, Richard Feynman. <laughs> science is the best way we have of not fooling ourselves, or at least trying not to fool ourselves. The main reason I'm here is that I've spent a lot of my career working in very international environments. When we work together for common goals with mutual respect, what we can achieve is wonderful. I'm very worried that at the moment there are trends that are retreating into isolationism and into nationalism. That will be very, very bad for us for many reasons, and one of the reasons is it will damage science and our way, our way of understanding the world. What do we want? Evidence-based policies! And what do we want? After peer review! Science is important. Science matters. And it matters to every single person. Science is the best method that we have for finding the best way of doing things. Science isn't just a collection of facts and figures. It's a way of thinking, and it's a way of distinguishing facts from fictions. A lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for antibiotics and vaccines. Vaccines alone save nine million lives every year. That's one person every 17 seconds is alive who wouldn't be alive if we didn't have vaccines. Owing to the fact that I'm tiny, but I have always been experimenting. From birth, we're always exploring. If you ask a parent or a teacher what the main question is that kids ask, most of those questions will start with the word, why? So one of the things that I really want to get everyone to do is to make sure you are asking questions. Ask for the evidence behind things. here for the reason that I like being alive and it seems that science really helps that possibility. There are people who I meet sometimes who go, oh, I don't really like science. I think science is overrated. And they say that as they sit in their centrally heated house next to that clean water that comes out of their tap, watching television and having access to a library greater than Alexandria while not dying of smallpox. There is this beautiful thing with science that everyone can communicate together. There is an international language of wonder. That is an important thing. We mustn't build new fake walls. We are a small planet with a splendid variety of life upon it at the moment. It is important to preserve that because as Carl Sagan said, it pale blue dot, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. These are important things to remember. Our galaxy itself contains a hundred billion stars. It's a hundred thousand light years side to side. It bulges in the middle, 16,000 light years thick, but out by us it's just 3,000 light years wide. With 30,000 light years from a galactic central point, we go round every 200 billion years. And the galaxy is only one of millions of billions in this amazing and expanding universe.